All right, Battletech enthusiasts, we've got an incoming Q&A here regarding infantry versus mechs, the tabletop glory of infantry defeating battle mechs. It's, it's quite irresistible, at least for my opinion. And uh, the question was like, Fritz, for real? Infantry versus mechs? Like pure infantry matchup versus pure mech matchup. Is that even possible for infantry to win? And yes, no, maybe, yes. Th- there's a lot of sliding factors. And um, in my opinion, and of course in the comments, if, if you just go pure mech versus pure infantry on the battle value, it'll be a pretty boring game. I don't even know if we would we would complete it. So really the glory of infantry is if you can catch battle mechs in a certain way, in a certain situation, literally a death trap for them, um, there is no way to escape. And that's the glory because you, you realize as a mech warrior, you've got a lot of skill, you've got a lot of invulnerability. And then when infantry catch you, when you literally walk into the hornet's nest, that's where things get very, very interesting. So let's just jump in on the metrics here. I mean, if I lay out, I'd need a pretty big battle mat, bunch of hex maps. We've got, let's say, 8K battle value. I was going to say 5, but really we want 8K. So 8K, you can buy a lot of toys. You take your two or three lances. Let's just say mechs versus infantry, no combined arms. You take 8K worth of mechs. If I take 8K worth of infantry, no, no support right now, just infantry, maybe jump infantry, that's going to flood the table and it's going to be like um, like that, that old school game Space Invaders. I'm just going to slowly march towards you. If you have certain equipped mechs, um, maybe you'll kill a stand a turn with machine guns or flamers, but eventually I'm going to back you up to the far edge of the hex maps and I'm just going to swarm you and I'm just going to destroy you. It's just literally going to be like a horde. Now, in a narrative, I mean... You're going to remove many, many infantry stands, but it's it's not going to be a very exciting game. That's just on the math crunching. And we do see this with a lot of different potential wargaming systems outside of historicals. Historical wargaming is interesting because for the most part, the, the missions and the units are fixed in that you're trying to relive a historical battle. So um, like Chain of Command World War II playing late war Germans, there's certain tanks that, that I love to take. I'm not taking 15 tanks. I'd be lucky to have one of these very, you know, King Tiger tanks. I'm lucky if I have one in the game. They just weren't present. It's not like uh, I can change it and spend some battle value and buy like 50 of these tanks. So what we see in a wargaming system where there's points or battle value in the case of Battletech is I spend it on my toys, you spend it on your toys. It, it kind of breaks down if you go all in on just really, really numerous cheap units and flood the table. I mean, you can see this in Warhammer 40K. You can see this in other gaming systems. So pure battle value, mechs versus infantry. Mechs and infantry, the infantry is going to swarm. It's, it's not going to be a very fun game. Where infantry have the advantage and how they shine is you have to be able to catch mechs to the point where two things have happened. You've created opportunity first, so you've opened up to internals or you've weakened them. So as the infantry fire and the damage locations spread, you'll tag an internal spot. Because think about rolling for crit in Battletech. Um, let's say left torso. you got some components in there. You've got some ammo in there. If I hit you with an auto cannon for five points of damage, or I hit you with a missile for two points of damage, or a large laser for eight points of damage, or even a PPC for 10 points of damage, yes, that internal is going to take damage, but you trigger a possible crit no matter what. So when you're looking for crit seeking, and this is with infantry, it's not so much the damage they do, it's the fact that it spreads out and I've got multiple stands multiple multiple opportunities to hit you to that internal. And if there's ammo in there or an engine or a gyro or something critical or even just a, a powerful weapon, that's where infantry excel and to be able to repeat that turn after turn after turn. So the first thing we need to do before we bring in a mech into our, our trap is potentially soften them up. Now, the other 
great thing about um, infantry is they're going to spread out the attacks and it's going to wear down a mech um, pretty fast. An assault mech or a heavy mech will weather that damage. Congratulations, you did four points of damage to your stalker's leg, you know, from some SRM hits, infantry SRM. But if that's a light mech and that spreads over, it is extremely deadly. If it's a medium mech, you can't really take that much damage for that much time. So the lower end mechs really need to fear, lower end tonnage really need to fear infantry. So we're going to bring them in. We're going to do the damage. Now, how you avoid infantry, it's pretty simple. Don't engage. Blow past them. Run past them. Um, Jump infantry, mechanized infantry is pretty fast. But even this, well, not Irby and not some super slow mechs, but I'd say 90% of the mechs out there can easily blow by infantry. If I've got infantry on a hill, just run by them. Don't engage them. So with infantry, you have to think, where am I going to place these infantry stands so my opponent has to move by them and I'm at least going to hit them up with fire? And second to that, where can I place these infantry stands so they have to engage? They they can't blow by. It's it's mission critical or it's a point on the table that's very, very valuable. That's where I want to be. So that's the first thing, really positioning with the infantry to be able to attack when something runs by and to encourage it not to run by based on the mission or, again, places to really, really dominate on the table. Now, how do you get there is the second piece. If it's a defensive mission, that's the infantry is the best for defensive missions. A defensive mission like you're holding a base or you're holding a part of the table because you just dig in. You don't need any transport. Mechs are going to come to you. Mechs are going to have to stay there to destroy and take the base. Infantry are going to be able to light them up. But we want it to be a little bit more dynamic. So you need some way to get there fast. You can do that with Karnovs. You can do that with generic, cheap transports, APCs. You can do that with um, kind of hybrid battle tank type transports and APCs. Um, Goblins backed by bulldogs. That's a very, very potent force with infantry. Infantry get out, they're fighting, and then you've got the fighting vehicles themselves for a lower battle value. So how are we going to deliver it? And and it could even be on a budget um, jump infantry. They're not fast, but they at least can get up there and and move. And what you lack in the size for a platoon, you can easily um, double down three or four stands of jump infantry. So in exploring this, um, what also works well with infantry, in my opinion, to to get you moving towards a certain area, artillery. Now, artillery and battle tech, um, whether it's uh, dedicated high-end artillery like a long tom or on-table artillery like um, a thumper or even dropping bombs from air support, although that's um, limited to the number of bombs that you can carry, if you hit, it's devastating. But artillery, rightly so in Battletech, is not always that accurate, and you have to kind of um, – it's a separate phase and separate rule. So it's, it's easy to keep moving and avoid artillery. But if I have a few pieces of artillery and you're camping out somewhere, I can drop it on there and encourage you very, very fast to um, shuffle from that position, move from that position, move possibly to places where my infantry are. And, you know, I'll drop it on, on that and see what we can do. So from that perspective, I, I find some a few low-end artillery pieces complement infantry extremely, extremely well. So from that perspective, now we get into mechs versus infantry, where I have the mobility to set myself up ahead of time, where you're going to have to blow by or you're going to have to hang out. I've got enough battle value in it, and I've got some ways that... By the time you connect with the infantry, hopefully I've weakened you or gone to some internals. That's where it becomes extremely, extremely deadly. So two, two examples uh, from not so recent games, but recent enough. Uh, one versus clans. And I uh, took out a vulture with infantry. Time literally stopped because, like, we just, what the heck just happened? So the um, there was a... Uh, Level three hill, pretty big hill. This is a traditional wargaming table, so it was a it was a um, 
it was literally a hill with three pieces on it. And this vulture and my archers were kind of dancing around the hill. Like we're, we're trying to like um, run around the hill together to get cover, but also like hit each other with, with weapons and like hit and fade and maybe some indirect fire. And the vulture's trying to keep distance. I'm trying to close somewhat. I had stands and stands of infantry on that hill just hanging out and they're just shooting LRM shots at that vulture. And eventually uh, they wore it down. Archers helped tremendously with some indirect fire because the stand was spotting indirectly and it went to internals and, um, you know, took it out from that perspective, caused the engine damage and and took it out. So that was one example. Um, But perhaps the best example was uh, when I was on the receiving end, we were in city fight, city tech, and I wanted to um, outflank my opponent. And there was this street, uh, you know, maybe three or four city blocks. I had um, three locusts ready to buzz down and, and just literally, you know, in three turns, I'd be in the rear there doing damage. And the whole street was lined with infantry. So even running at top speed, I was going to eat stands and stands of infantry. Now, I'd have the stacking bonus for movement, but I was at point blank range and I just I just couldn't eat that type of firepower. I mean, I, I did the the uh, the math hammer. And I'm like, I can't do it. I didn't do it. Looking back, I, I probably should have done it. I mean, four locusts. Let's let's kind of see what happens because, um, honestly, tactically, well, see if I got if I run the locusts down there and they got destroyed, I'm down on the initiative sink, and that's massive. That that's to lose four on the initiative would be um, huge. But tactically speaking, I didn't run them down, so they kind of hung out uh, for a good portion of the game with my main force not really doing that much. So they weren't really changing the battle other than I did have four initiative sinks. I didn't lose them. So that perspective, infantry versus mechs. Uh, Yes, absolutely. Infantry are very, very deadly. Don't be fooled. But if you stack them... Just uh, space invaders, here's the infantry marching forward. I mean, you could do that once or twice, try it out. Uh, It's not going to be very dynamic. It's not going to be very fun. And especially if you're playing on a big, big wargaming table, not just a bunch of hex maps, then it'll just be a game of me running around for four or five hours and you trying to catch me. But used with the correct combined arms, used with some artillery, used with a delivery system, uh, the battle value buy-in is still pretty low. And that mobility, when they get into place and potentially dealing crits and spreading out the damage against lights and mediums, it's brutal. If it can catch a heavy or an assault that's that's slightly crippled but still in the fight, that's going to be a major problem. And exploring, this leads into um, combined arms with infantry and tanks, it is an aspect of Battletech. And I want to encourage you to look at my... Battletech playlist here, looking at tanks and combined arms, um, ultimately you and your opponent, your gaming partner, your group, this is the great thing about Battletech, you can decide we want to play combined arms or we don't want to play combined arms, but it is something to consider and do. And of course, look, Battletech being a miniatures game, at this point, you're probably caught up on most of the catalyst plastics. You've You've been buying those blind boxes like crazy. And you're like, I need some more stuff to buy. Now you can jump into the tanks and the infantry and blow out your Battletech collection from that perspective. 